everybody and welcome back to Traveling with Eva. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, but it's something that I really enjoy, so I thought I would share it with you. Um, we are going to be doing a tutorial today on DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is the software that my family and I use for all of our projects, for all of our channels, and it's really, really nice. It's like a professional um, editing software, but you can use it for free, and it's really nice and pretty easy to use once you get the basics of it. And so today, I thought I'd teach you some of the basics because that's what I enjoy doing. <laughs> Um, make sure to check out our family channel, What in the World Family. I'll leave it in the description down below. My mom has been doing a really great job on editing and posting a lot of videos on there, so I would suggest you go and check that out. Okay, anyways, let's get started. So when you open up DaVinci Resolve, I'm using DaVinci Resolve 17. Then it will open up a projects page. And you should see, well, I'm in a folder right now, but if you go back to projects, you should see all your projects. For right now, you should have this one untitled project. I have my own folder for DaVinci Tutorials. So you're going to press this button down here, new project. And we are going to name it um, our tutorial test one. Enter. And it's going to open up this page. Here is the media page. The media page is where you're going to import all your video files, your audio files, your picture files, whatever. You're going to import them into here. So what you're going to do is right click on this no clips and media pool, which this is your media pool, and click on import media or control I. Once you click on that, it should pull up your, it just should pull up file explorer and you look for whatever file you want to put in, whatever video you're trying to edit. And say I want to edit my old intro. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to press open. You can click on, you can select more than one, but I'm just gonna do this one for right now. And you click on open, right? And it should show up in your media pool right here. Then you're going to go, we're just gonna look over the cut page, which I don't really use that much, but some people find it very useful, so. Here are a couple things that you can do in the cut page. First of all, you have your media in the media pool right over here. And if you double click on this media from the media pool, it'll show up over here on this screen and what you can do on this screen is just play through it and then where you want to cut something out let's say I want to cut out this right here press I and then keep playing it and when you want to cut again you press O and then you can drag that down drag the picture down into it and it will just play that clipped part so I and O is very very useful for this if you drag it over or double click and then have I and O and you could do multiple cuts like see I already cut something there let's say I want to cut this push play push O again I O then you can select that one part and bring it in and it's just, it's really useful so let's head to the edit page now so that we can well edit the video so now that we're in the edit page we have a bunch of different things that we can do up here we have the media pool which shows our media we have an effects library which is really really nice it's got video transitions audio transitions text effects all kinds of really fun stuff that you can mess around with and I'll probably do future tutorials on if this one um, goes okay <laughs> um, and there is like the sound library but you have to like download some stuff in there so I don't usually use that but the main two ones that you're going to use are the effects library and the media pool. So I would have these both up. Say I wanted to move this part, this uh, ending part, to the front of this clip. I would just drag it over and it should cut right into yeah, the next part. I'll just drag this over and then when I play it, it's just going to cut to the next part like I wanted to, right? That's nice, but what if I want a smoother transition? Because that's really, really jagged, you know? 
Then I'm going to go to the video transitions. And you can see there's all kinds of ones that I want. But I think that I'm going to do a cross dissolve, which is probably one of the best ones that you can use. And it basically just crosses the two images and dissolves them into each other, which is really, really nice for a smooth transition. You see how smooth that was? That's what I want, right? So this is something that's really, really important to save your project. I don't know how many projects I've lost because I've forgotten to save them, but it is so annoying. So what you want to do is just push Control S if you want to save it quickly, or go up into File and then push Save Project, okay? And that'll just save it. You just want to save it every few changes or whatever so that you don't lose it because it it's really sucks. <laughs> so now that we've got this transition, I want to have some extra text on top of it. So I'm going to go to the titles right over here. And there is a bunch of different titles. There's really cool ones that you can mess around with. I really like just I the normal one is just text, which is a basic title, right? And you can see it up in this corner when I scroll my my mouse over it, then it shows the samples. And I want to see which one is the best for my, what I'm looking for. I'm going to look for like kind of a rising text. So these are more like in the tubes, kind of on the side. What's the, this one, this one's a rising one. So this is the one that I want to use, right? I'm going to put it on top. Don't put it, don't put it like over your video because it will get rid of your videos. You can see, even if you move it away, it's going to get rid of it. So, you're going to just drag it above the uh, video or photo or whatever you're using. And you can see how there's like this black thing right here, this black bar. It's because of a certain type of text. It's not going to do that for any other text. It's just because of the text I chose. Let me fix that real quick. So, where do I want this? I want this right just right above this white part. I don't want it in this pink part. I just want it right here. So what I'm gonna do is use Control B. Control B is the shortcut for cutting something and it's really, really useful and nice to use. And then I can just push backspace on this because sometimes if I press delete, it messes it up because what delete does is it doesn't just delete the video or the file or whatever, it deletes that space in the timeline. So if this was right here and I deleted it, it would delete that whole space. So backspace is usually what I use, but delete definitely helps sometimes. Like see, if this was way over here and there was something right here and I didn't like that, if I press delete, see how it moved this over? It's because it's actually just deleting that space. It's not just deleting the media. So I'm gonna undo all that and I'm gonna tell you right now because it saved my life a lot is there is a shortcut that is really, really nice um, for the undo button, but you have to just like manually set that in preferences. So I might do that in a future video. But for right now, you just have to go to edit and click undo. And then it should just undo whatever mistakes you made. So then you get your text on here, right? And you want to edit what it says. This is a special one, so I'll show you with the normal text soon, uh, just after this one. But it's going to have top text and the main text for this one. Because it's the small text about the two lower text lines. The top text, I want to say traveling. And the main text, I want to say with Eva, because that's my new channel name. Okay, and it's gonna sit here for a while. You can change the color, you can change the position, you can change whatever you want. But I'm gonna change the color because I don't like that color. I want turquoise. Okay, and then my top text, I want pink. Okay, so now that I've changed both of these, right now it still looks black because it's just in the shadows, I can play it. Sometimes it takes a while be to adjust because um, these like different texts that do different things, um, they take a longer time to process or whatever just because they have more things to do. So if you have the problem that it's not rising and it's like you've tried a bunch of times but it's still not working, the animation's still not working, it could be because 
at the beginning of the text it's staying there and at the end so you might have it too short so you might have to cut off the end of the text um, text bar and drag it over so that it actually works sometimes I'll show you an example because that was kind of confusing so let's say this is mine right it's not rising that's because it's at the beginning of the text bar the text bar is like this so if we watch the whole thing then it rises right there it's a little bit glitchy because it's still trying to work through but it rises way back here so I want that to happen but um, I want this to happen in the front right I don't want it way back here because then you can't see it so what you have to do is cut out that specific part and then bring that to the beginning and that is how you put the text on top but that's like another like I said a fancy text so we can use this normal text the, just the basic title text and see how different that is this just stays in the middle it doesn't do anything the whole time so you can adjust it for what you want you can change the color to whatever you want you can change the size you can make it super big or you can make it really really small you can I guess you can yeah so you can squish it together or make it super far apart you can line space it, it's just a lot of cool stuff you can do there's different font styles there are different fonts alignments blah 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 and you can also do some cool things like background which is just right here in the background section if you go to the title if you click on it this should show up and you should be able to click on this and edit the text Hello, fam. <laughs> and then you can go down here to background. If it's if it's um, it might not be open. You see how like you can't get down to it. You might have to double click on it, and then it will open up the menu page. And it says that there's width, but there's not height. So what you do is you. Oh, I gotta change the color because the background's black, so it's not gonna work. I'm gonna make it turquoise and so now the height I can make the height as big as I want and I can make the the outline um, as big as I want because you, you gotta change the color of the outline too but um, the outline is gonna be white and I'm gonna make the outline super fat like you can make it super fat you can make it super thin you can have the width super small whatever you want it doesn't really matter. You can do whatever the heck you want with it. Just play around with it, see what suits you best, and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes the fancy text just doesn't work because it needs to be a certain amount of length and you can't cut out the ends, but other times you can cut off the ends and just place it where you want to. So you're just gonna have to play around with it and see what works and what doesn't. Play around with the text, play around with the font, do whatever the heck you want. Okay, so now that I have my text on top of my other text, my Traveling with Eva, over the Life with Eva, I think that I'm all set for the text at least. I have my transition, it goes right into it, so I've edited my little video. Um, another thing that's really cool to use and you can also play around with is the open effects or the effects, which are basically just a bunch of different things that will like make your video look a lot cooler. Like, say I want to make my video a, li a little bit more, like, shiny. Like, I want it to glow a little bit more. It doesn't have enough light to it. I can bring this, this glow effect, and drag it over and put it on this video. And see, that makes it glow a lot more. But I think it glows a little bit too much. I don't need that much. So what I'm going to do is click on the video and then go to Effects up here and Open Effects. And there's this glow. This is the effects that I put on. You could put more than one on one video, but I just wanted to put on one. Um, you can have the brightness. I want to change that a little bit more down because it's a little bit too bright for me. You can have a color of the glow. I can make the color of the glow green. You can have it reflect in the camera or not. It's just a lot of different things you can play around with. It doesn't really matter. And you can just make your video look a lot more cool. Another thing with video or audio is that sometimes the volume's way too low and then sometimes it's way too high. As you can see here, I have these um, 
kind of marks that show me how loud it is. This one's a lot quieter than this one. So I want to change that, right? I can click on this, the video, and go to audio up here. And I can adjust the volume right here by dragging this down or up, or I could drag this little dot, but that's kind of harder to get correct. Or I could go down here and find this, these two little arrows and I can adjust it from here. See, it changes it from both sides. So I want it to be a little bit quieter. I want it to be kind of the same as this one. I also want it to be a little bit more high pitched because I want to make it a little bit different. There's these pitch, this is pitch um, menu here. And what you can do is these semitones, if you bring it way down, it'll, it'll um, have the audio go super low. And if you bring it way up, it'll make the audio pitch super high. So high or low pitch, you can change voices, you can change music. It's a really fun effect net in any case. So let me show you. Right now, it's normal, okay? Okay, that's the normal sound. I'm going to make it a little bit lower. See, it changed the pitch, but what if I put it all the way down? What's it gonna sound like? It's way lower, right? If I put it up, it's gonna make the pitch a little bit higher. So let's change the pitch a little bit higher. You could see it was a little bit higher and all the way. That's that's a bit too, that's a bit too high. <laughs> I, I'm gonna make it a little bit more high pitch, but not that much. So you can just mess around with this pitch again. It's just another really fun thing that you can do. But that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you around, kind of the basics around the edit page. And now it sounds like while we want it, it sounds really really high pitched compared to the other one, definitely. And I think that's my video, right? I'm all done. I don't want to edit anything else, but you definitely can. And I'm going to put some more, um, some more tutorials if I missed anything or just some other smaller details that you can use. For right now, this is probably what you want to use. Control B for cutting easily. Control C, Control X, Control V, all the same. Control S, um, Control S, save, and then the rest are for cutting and copying and pasting. If you don't want to have to use control B and you just would rather like you want to cut it up a lot quicker instead of having to do control B and then move it in control B, you can use this tool. It's the blade and when you click on it, you can just cut up wherever you want. No, like you could just cut it wherever you want, right? And it'll cut up uh, any video, any um, text, any photo. It's not going to cut up these transitions or anything like that. But that's pretty much, you just got to remember to switch back to the um, cursor, which is why I don't really like it, because it's kind of annoying to have to remember to select the cursor and then move whatever you want, wherever you want. But that's just, it's just easier for me to do control B. It's just something just in case. Also, if you're having a tight space and, you, and like you're trying to move something over, but it keeps like, it keeps like um, automatically snapping you don't want it to snap then you can turn off this magnet right here and then you can just drag it freely it's not going to snap into position or anything but it definitely does make it a little bit harder and i always have to remember to put it back on again so i don't usually use it i only use it if i absolutely need to like have this one thing moved in a certain spot one thing if you need to get down to the very very details is instead of pressing this plus and this minus this dot which basically just zooms in and out for you you can do alt and scroll alt and scroll basically just helps you zoom in and out without having to push these little minus and plus signs all the time and also a little bit more control over where you're zooming and a little bit slower so i usually use alt and zoom out those are pretty much those are <coughs> those are some helpful tools that i really like to use um, but other than that, I think that you're pretty much good to go on everything. If, if you just want to edit something pretty basic and just move some stuff around a cut and you can add multiple files and put them on top of each other, whatever, play around with it and see my new, um, tutorials. I'm hoping I'm going to make some more because I really like doing this and I'm hoping that you learned something from this because this is definitely a great program and I would totally suggest it for any editing you're going to do. The thing 
is, you're finished with your video, right? And you're done, you've got everything figured out. And you've checked it, double checked over and over again that it is correct and what you want it to be. How do you export it? How do you get it out of DaVinci and into like an MP4 file? What you're gonna have to do is come over to this page, the deliver page with the little rocket ship. And if you don't see the words under it, it's because if you right click, then it says show icons and labels or show icons only. So you might have it like this, but if you wanna see the labels, you can right click and just select show icons and labels, which is a really useful thing. But you go into the deliver page and it should look like this. And the reason you can't really see anything is because I'm zoomed out too far. But if I zoom in, I have this and you can select to render the entire timeline or just like in the cut page, you can press in and out and only export that. But I usually just use the entire timeline. So what you're gonna do is you're going to have up here all these different ones. If you're exporting it for YouTube, for Vimeo, you can choose which one is the best for you, but if you would rather have something that you like make your own and choose your own settings, then you can click on custom and just change everything in here. I already have all the settings, my default settings that I want in this, which is the YouTube videos. Um, it's not gonna show up for you unless you've already created one. And you basically just say, uh, you change all these, like what format do you want it? Do you want it to be an MP4? Do you want it to be a JPEG? What do you want it to be? Um, the resolution, I usually have it at 920 times 1080 HD and the quality automatic to medium or restrict to this is basically just saying you know your video quality do you want it to be the best the least low medium high you can choose all that i usually do medium uh the keyframes automatic frame ordering just keep these the same advanced settings keep most of these the same that's what i usually do you can choose whatever you want you can have the jpeg you can have 720 times 480 whatever settings you want but that all depends on what you're making so i could go over those settings in a future video after you get all your settings figured out then you're going to name your file i'm just going to name it edited um edited video because I want to and then you just find what location you want it. I'm just gonna do uh, Downloads and then you press save and it should Save it to that you should see it right here and then scroll down make sure everything's good Add to render queue when you click on add to render queue. It's gonna show up over here Then all you have to do is click render all which is just gonna render all the jobs that are in this a render queue and it's just gonna go through it and it will export it to wherever you chose a location as an mp4 or JPEG whatever you chose and then it will say completed in however long it took to complete it sometimes you can these can take a very very long time if you have a high resolution or like long video but this one was what two seconds one second so it took one second to render so I'm gonna go to my downloads, and here is my video right here in downloads, edited video. And there you go, it's one second. All my edits right there, and the text, the high pitched, the transition, everything's there. It should export like this, and you should have your video to put on YouTube or whatever, but this is your video, and you can put it, and you should have your video and then you can put it wherever you want on YouTube or Twitter or something else. And that's pretty much it. So keep learning more. I'll try to post more of these videos doing more specifics and going over the fusion, the color, and the Fairlight pages, which are these three down here. But that's all for now. That's just how to edit a basic video in DaVinci Resolve. I hope that you guys learned something from that today. And this is a really great editing software, so I hope that you uh, continue to use it and continue to learn more. And I'm going to go edit this video in DaVinci Resolve. So, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. It really means a lot to me. Bye-bye.
<laughs> this is me after, this is literally me after the video. I'm coughing and my voice is dead. Oh my god, Isaac was here the entire time editing something on DaVinci. <laughs> oh my god.